What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com. Have you ever created a cool vector illustration or a type treatment that you wanted to show mocked up on a t-shirt or another type of product? Well, in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can go about creating a realistic t-shirt mockup from scratch in Photoshop. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to go about creating a realistic t-shirt mock-up for your apparel designs. Um, this is something that a couple of people have been asking me about, so I decided to do a video on it. So, um, to start off, I just have this stock photo that I grabbed off of Deposit Photos. It's just a standard kind of t-shirt, just a blank, dark t-shirt on a guy. And I went ahead and actually created a path already so that I could have the t-shirt um, ready to go. And this is the first thing that you want to do really when you're going to create a template is to kind of isolate uh, the fabric or the, the item that you want to place your designs on. And the cool thing is about using paths when you create a path with the pen tool in Photoshop is that you can just save it as a JPEG. So you can always come back to it later and you'll still have a path there. So it's just a smaller file than if you were to, you know, say for example, cut out the shirt using a uh, layer mask and then saving your, your file as a Photoshop file. Um, that file would be a bit larger. So that's one of the benefits of just using paths and saving a JPEG. Anyway, I'm going to uh, activate this path just by holding command and clicking on the work path. Then come over to the layers palette and press command J to bring uh, the shirt onto a layer of its own, like so. And so now you'll see that we have the isolated t-shirt. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and name that really quick, just call it uh, Silo for now. And the first thing that we have to do is create a displacement map. So I'm going to make one more copy of that by pressing Command J. And then I'm going to come down here to the adjustment layers options. And while holding down the Alt Option key, choose uh, black and white. All right, so we're just going to make the shirt completely black and white to make sure. And then we're going to select that copy again and come back down to the adjustment layers. And then this time choose levels. Now the goal here, and let me just turn off the, the background there. The goal here is just to get some more contrast between the, the black and the white on the t-shirt um, because when we create a displacement map it's basically going to use just the, the black and white to determine you know what is raised and what kind of sinks in um, or, or what recedes into the t-shirt and what I mean by that is just you know these shadowy areas is where our graphic is going to get pushed back and the, the lighter areas are where the, the graphic is going to pop out so we just want to apply a levels adjustment to get more contrast out of that. Now once you've done that, you can hold down the shift key and select all three of these layers and then press command plus E on the keyboard to merge them. Alright, I'm going to create one more copy of it just so I have that as a backup. And I'm going to come up here to the filter menu and choose blur, Gaussian blur. Now you don't want to blur it too much, but enough so that you don't have really hard lines. Maybe somewhere around five or six should do it for this image. All right, I'm just going to hit OK. And then all we're going to do from there is save this file on our desktop. And I'm just going to call it Displace. All right, and that's going to serve as our displacement map. Now, from here, we can come back to our original image. And we're going to save this as a separate file. Let's just call it Shirt Mockup or Shirt Mock. OK, so you want to keep those files separate. From here, we can now place our graphic on the t-shirt. Now, uh, for the sake of saving time here, I actually grabbed this graphic off of the same stock photo site, Deposit Photos, um, just so that I could demonstrate how it works. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll do other videos in the future where I actually show you guys how to create graphics like this. Um, but for now, I just wanted to show you, you know, this example of how to apply it to your, to your mock-up. Um, so I, I just kind of grabbed this one for now. Um, so I removed the background, and you'll see that you have you know, all these blue areas, and the problem with this is that if you were to apply this as is right now to the t-shirt graphic, let me show you, you would have all of those blue areas kind of showing up, right? And we don't really want that, you know, mo what most people would probably do is apply this and just, you know, change it to multiply and, and call it a day, um, but we're not going to do that. We want to go for something a little bit more realistic, so the first thing we have to do is get rid of all this blue. And this is a really handy way to do this um, in Adobe Illustrator. 
So I'm going to select everything and then make sure that you have your Pathfinder available. If you don't see this over here in your panel, you can come to Window and Pathfinder. From here, we want to select this middle option, not the middle, but the second from the left um, on the bottom row of icons that is called Merge. All right, we're going to merge all of this together. All right, from here, press A to get your Direct Select tool and then click on any area of that bluish gray color. From there, we're going to come up to the Select menu and choose Same Fill and Stroke and then just delete it. All right, so now everywhere that we had that blue is knocked out, which is exactly what we want. So now when we select our, our graphic, copy it, come over to Photoshop and drop this in as a smart object, you'll now see that everywhere where we had that bluish gray color is now just revealing the shirt or whatever is behind it. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and just place this graphic on the shirt. And I'm just doing a free transform here while holding the shift key to make it a little bit smaller. Now the next step is to actually make another copy of the t-shirt graphic, turn off the first layer. So now all you have is your original background and your t-shirt graphic showing. And from there, we're gonna come up to filter and choose distort displace. All right, and you can leave these options as is for the moment. We're not too concerned about that, but it's gonna ask you to locate a file. And this is where we're gonna select our displacement PSD that we created a few moments ago. And then just hit open. Oops. Yeah, so we wanted to apply that displace filter, but it's telling us that our, our file is empty. Oops, I think I grabbed the wrong file. Sorry guys. Come up here to distort and choose displace. And here I have a displace file. Okay, so you'll, you could tell that the graphics shifted a little bit there, um, but this is kind of the next step where the magic happens. We're gonna double click on our graphic now to bring up the layer style dialog box. And on the bottom here, you'll see that we have this option called blend if, and it says blend if gray. Uh, for this layer and blend if gray for the underlying layer. So what we're going to do is hold down the alt option key to separate these two sliders and we're just going to move this one over to the right a little bit so that it starts to blend and you can see how this is starting to look a lot more realistic. It's actually kind of blending in with the t-shirt under underneath which is exactly what this is for. It's blending it with the underlying layer. Now if I turn the preview on and off you can see how before it's just kind of bright and flat looking, but by doing this, it blends in with the t-shirt much better. Now from here, what is cool is that we still have our original uh, selection from our t-shirt that we created. So we can hold down the command key and select the layer thumbnail to create this active selection around the shirt. From there, if you want to change the color, just come back down to your adjustment layer uh, that menu on the bottom and we're going to choose solid color. Now let's say we want like a reddish color or even a blue, anything really. Let's, let's try the red first and see how that looks, kind of a reddish brown. And from here, I'm just going to change the blending mode of that layer to color. All right, so you can see how you can now easily change the color of the shirt in real time just by using that adjustment layer, which is a really nice kind of feature, especially if you want to see how your graphic looks in a variety of colors. You know, the blue is actually pretty nice. Red could work, maybe a, a darker red, something like that. I think looks pretty cool too. So now you guys have seen how you can create a realistic t-shirt mock-up on a model here in Photoshop. And, you know, how to blend that graphic to make it look much more realistic than, say, this. Alright, so this is the, you know, before, and here's the after. Okay, and I want to show you guys one more cool trick really, uh, really fast before we wrap this up. So let's say that you have uh, multiple versions of something in one file and you want to be able to, you know, go back and forth between those options quickly without having to, you know, turn this layer on, turn that layer off, turn this one on, and so forth. What you can do is come over here to your layer comps. And layer comps are great. I use these all the time. So I just wanted to, to show you guys how this works. Um, what you do is whichever layers you have on at the moment, it basically does like a, a screen grab or a freeze frame of your layers palette. So it's going to remember which layers you have turned on and off. 
So now if I put on my original graphic, add a new layer comp, you'll have you know, your original layer comp, one, and then let's say we have our, our t-shirt graphic on, on a, on a dark shirt, and then if I turn this other layer on to show the red shirt, I can again create a new layer comp and just call it three. So now the beauty of that is I can just quickly click on any of these layer comps to look at the different options that we have in the same file. So it's a great way to kind of jump back and forth between different variations. Um, but one thing to remember is that, you know, if you want to create a new color variation, say you want a different colored shirt, if I just change this and then, you know, come back here, it's going to be a totally different red. So what I would recommend uh, you guys do is actually create a duplicate of the colors, change the color here, and then you're just going to basically make a new layer comp for that color variant. All right, so four. So you can't, you can't change one layer and have it appear differently in different layer comps. You actually have to create different layers and turn the visibility on and off manually the first time. But then from there, you can quickly kind of go back and forth between these different variations that you have. So um, that's just kind of a cool little bonus that I wanted to share with you guys is how to use layer comps in Photoshop. So I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If so, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And I also wanted to tell you guys about our Design Better Contest, which we're uh, starting up. Well, we started it last month, and we're going to be doing these videos where uh, you guys, the viewers, and, and everyone else out there has the opportunity to uh, do a, a Q&A and ask me any design-related questions. And also, it's your chance to get help with any project that you may be working on, whether it's a logo or could be something like this, like an apparel design that you want some help with. Um, so I'm going to pick three to five people each month and do a video where I answer your questions and help you by working on your project in one of our videos. So check it out. There'll be a link for that below. And uh, it's called our Design Better Contest. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.